All right, here we are back with another episode. And Depo, which I hopefully I remembered to pronounce that correctly. Uh, you want to introduce yourself for everybody? Uh, sure. Uh, my name's Depo Moran. Originally from Bountiful, Utah, like North Salt Lake. Uh, I've been living in Salt Salt Lake for the last few years. And yeah, I make clothing, ski related, non ski related, but yeah. Yeah. So you're in Salt Lake right now? Yeah, I'm in Salt Lake. Awesome. All right, cool. So yeah, let's get into it. Let's get the background. Um, I think you should share the background on your name. Uh, just because I think it's I think it's pretty cool. So you want to give people the rundown on it? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so my name's Depo. And uh, Po is a city in France. That's where my family's from. And da means French. <laughs> da means from in French. So da Po, from Po. So yeah, from love Po, it. da Po. I love that. Cool. So what is it like growing up in Bountiful? I don't really know much about Bountiful. Is it like, it's a suburb of Salt Lake, correct? Or is it like a smaller city? It's like a different city, a little north. It's like the the Mormon Mecca of Utah, of Utah. (laughs) So I I think I was like one of three kids there that grew up not Mormon. But uh, it's like, it's really high up, uh, like elevation wise. So tons of snow all the, like in the winter and stuff, like 20 minute drive from Salt Lake. So yeah, very Mormon. But lots of skiers and lots of like activities and hikes and stuff to do. So, yeah, yeah. not bad at all. That's awesome. So, what is it like growing up around Mormons? Like, because <clears throat> I had a couple, like, just I had a couple Mormons in my town, but it was the inverse. There was like one or two here in Connecticut okay. or in the town I grew up in, in Connecticut. So, what is it like it being the inverse where everyone around you is Mormon? Um, everyone just kind of tries to convert you all the time and like uh like my parents drank alcohol and like when other people came over to my place and saw like there was like wine on the counter or something they would like kind of freak out and like just like dumb stuff like that but around like high school people are mature enough to like not be super judgmental about that kind of stuff so but early years were tough yeah definitely like middle school years and like even earlier like in high school because every every other town in america kids in high school start starting to party what what was it like in your high school was it just like they go out and drink soda like i heard that the soda culture is huge for them out there soda culture is crazy yeah there's like all these drive-through soda places but yeah like not a lot of people were out smoking and drinking like my buddies would like my buddies and I would like go out in the woods and smoke and drink but you didn't even like want to tell many people or else like yeah I don't know wow yeah that's pretty intense crazy yeah (laughs) yeah so what was what was the home mountain for you growing up Uh, I grew up skiing Park City I've like a Park City season pass since I was like five probably grew up skiing there until first year of college then i started riding brighton and now i basically only ride brighton yeah sick that'll come back up in the uh, viewer questions later people were asking some specific stuff about brighton but uh how far was that how far was uh, park city from bountiful i don't like do you go back in through salt lake and then go over the mountains or is there a different route over uh yeah you just go like salt lake just like straight up parleys so it's like yeah, like 45 minutes and you're up to the mountains like when I was growing up Park City had night skiing and it was open till like nine so after school we would just like go up there and just like have full three kings park to ourselves, all lit up and like no one night skied so it's like it was awesome yeah oh that's Lots super sick skiing. how old are you I'm 24 Okay, cool. So who were like the pros that were riding at uh, Park City at the time? Was that like the, when you were younger, it was probably like the 4x9 crew, right? Yeah, it was 4x9 crew when I was like pretty young, for sure, like old Park City days. And then it was kind of more like 
still the four by nine guys were around like Tom and Steve and those guys I would always see around. Then it was like more of like the hood crew kind of guys around when I was really getting into it. And like, they're like the sickest people to watch ride in person of all time. So yeah, they're yeah. Like awesome people to watch. What was it like, you know, cause every mountain has, you know, either the somebody that goes on to be pro or, but like growing up like around guys that are just going insanely hard to, how did that influence your skiing when you were younger? Were you looking at them like, yeah, that's the goal. Or were you like, nah, those guys are like untouchable. <laughs> no, I mean, I definitely, I wanted to be really good. Like I always wanted to be really good. And like when I was younger, I would definitely throw my body around because park city, like, it's a different thing like when Tom Wallace and Steve and like all these crazy pros are at the top of the knock like the top waiting to drop into the jump and like they're watching you and like well I'm not just gonna straight air again I'm not gonna just do like another 360 like I'm gonna scare myself here but yeah that gets old when you start like breaking bones a little bit and, <laughs> and like embarrassing yourself but no, I've, uh, I love challenging myself skiing for sure, but no, definitely changed my aspect of challenging myself skiing recently, not just doing tricks on the Park City jumps. Yeah, sick. So you went, did, did you end up going to U of U or did you go to a different school? Uh, yeah, I went to the U. So what was that? Yeah, what was that process like? Did you, what'd you go in for set? Like, what'd you go into study? Uh, what was your plans? Like all of that. Uh, I went, I studied uh, parks, recreation, and tourism. Classic. And outdoor recreation. So lots of like, uh, like a lot of people are guides and like kind of have like outdoor education careers with that kind of degree. So it's like a lot of camping and like a lot of like uh, programming for like recreation activities and stuff like that. So like, I knew that, like, uh, the only way I was going to finish college in four years is if it was going to be, like, doing stuff that I enjoyed and that was fun. <laughs> so, I definitely went the more, like, fun college route than, like, the engineering technical degree kind of thing. But I had a great time. I skied a ton, made a lot of good friends, learned a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. That's awesome. I just, so I just got to ask, cause that, I love that major. Like what, do you remember any of like the specific classes you had to take? Like, is it like camping, you know, like I don't even know what the classes would be. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there was like this outdoor adventure programming class that I had. And like the first, uh, like the first half of the semester, you were just planning a trip like for your whole classmates to do and like, like one like section was in charge of food and like planning and safety and all that kind of stuff and then we would just go on the trip like a two two week long trip and like all of that time counted like while we were on the trip like during like it counts for class credit hours so you go on the trip for like two weeks then you have the rest of the semester off but you go on a sweet camping trip and like you learn to plan it all it's like yeah pretty awesome Dude, that sounds awesome. I studied business yeah. and now all I do is like production logistics. So it's like the same thing. It's like, what's everyone going to eat? Where's everyone going to sleep? <laughs> so like, that sounds way more relevant to what I'm doing now than anything I studied. So that's like super sick. Is there like a final yeah. final project for, for that major? Like a like a thesis type thing or, or not? Nah? Uh, yeah, it's like a full semester long full-time internship. And so I ended up doing that at Woodward Park City. And so like, uh, yeah, I got hired by Woodward for that before like they were open. So they're like still under construction, like making the facility. So like I got to like open the, like the rental shop and the skate shop down there with them. And like got to just do that for like four months instead of going to school and got paid for it. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> and I got to see. So when so what year did that open? Because I remember like all the news articles about it. I just can't like remember the time period. 
I think it was like 2019. Holy shit, so sure. recent. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, super recent. I know, like, when I was a kid, they had, like, uh, like Woodward booths up at Park City, like, years ago. So they were going to, like, before Vailbot Park City, they are going to make a Woodward, like, up at Park City at the resort. And I think that was just scrap when uh, Vail took over. So definitely took a while to relocate, but it's pretty sick now. I like Woodward a lot. Yeah, that's sick. That's awesome that you got to grow up there, like, around all that. Who was the... Uh... Who was the crew growing up? Like, did any of that carry over into who you're still chilling with now? Yeah, I grew up skiing with uh, my roommate now. His name's Cash. But he didn't get a pass last year. He's kind of anti-skiing for the last little bit. So I've kind of just been riding with, like, my snowboarder friends that I've been riding with since junior high school. Like, yeah, like Cash I've been riding with since junior high school. Ride with, like, my buddy Sean. Where it's like a snowboard shop in Salt Lake called Milo. Ride with him a lot. My buddy Braden, ride with him a bunch too. But just kind of buddies I grew up with uh, in Bountiful, kind of. But when you go up to Brighton, like you see people that like you you just met over time. So there's like huge crews of people just always riding up there. Always got someone to ride with. What do you guys think of the uh, – cause... Salt Lake City is kind of turn. It's I don't, I'm almost reluctant to use this term because it's like the mecca for Mormons, but it's kind of like turning into the mecca for park skiers. So, what do you guys think of the, all the Very people true. from all over the country coming to your city and just, you know, renting every spot, you know, driving up every canyon? What are the what are the views of the outsiders? Uh, it's rough, honestly. <laughs> it's super rough. Like my buddy Cash, like. I mean, when we grew up riding, like, we weren't used to long lines and, like, gnarly stuff. But now, like, it's it's such a fight to, like, ride on a pow day or, or a weekend here. So it sucks. But we've been finding other ways to have fun. Like, we go up uh, Mill Creek Canyon, which is, like, right next to big and little Con- Conwood Canyons. But it's, like, $5, and you just go up there. And we just like take our snow skates up there and just like wander around in the woods. Like, you know. it's nice to be in a city that has like mountains and snow accessible, like so close. But yeah, the resorts are becoming very blown out for you know, a lot of locals. Yeah. You ever go? I just learned about this mountain. Like, where is it? It's down by like St. George. You ever been to the one down there? What is it called? Like, uh, it's Brian Head. Brian Head. I was gonna say it's got some goofy name. Yeah, you ever been down there? I know nothing about the scene in Southern Utah for skiing, but ne- never been. It seems really sick, honestly. Like, there was a traveling circus episode there a few years ago. It had some really cool looking, like, creative rails. But I've heard like last couple seasons it's gone. Their park has gone downhill a little bit, but it's it's definitely a trek. Down oh there. yeah uh, i need to i definitely need to it's uh, it's cool to ski next to red rock for sure that's awesome yeah that is awesome so uh let's transition into uh your clothing brand lizard stuff where where does this originate like i've uh, i've asked this the past couple episodes but like were you somebody that was always into fashion or was this something that came up later in life uh i've definitely always like ski fashion got me into like more so like other fashion but I always thought it was sick how like like Tom Wallace had like crazy matching color kit when I was skiing like as a little kid just looking at that like you get to like dress up in like a like a I don't even know like a costume and like go have fun with your friends like I always thought that was sick and, like, I remember, like, Max Hill, I always thought it was super sick in Traveling Circus. He's, like, first guy I saw with, like, really tight pants. And I, like, my mom uh, is a seamstress. And, like, she made, like, bedding and all kinds of stuff for people growing up. So I always had a sewing machine. So I just, like, sew my pants super tight and have, like, these crazy tight skinny pants. And I always thought it was super sick. And, like, yeah, I always thought the dressing up while skiing was super funny. Yeah, I thought it was cool. 
Ken Dumont's red and white kit and like yep. Slim Dog Illionaire is like my favorite. Like, <laughs> or like the, like the, uh, uh, I think it's the, yeah, the movie Idea with like Pollard and all those dudes in like the single colored baggy kits with no poles. Like, it looks so sick. Yeah. That's pretty sick. I was just at Hood last week and I saw, I saw a kit for the first time that blew me away. I think it was just like some regular dude riding around. Like he wasn't even in the park, but it was a it was a gold and black North Face full kit, like top and bottom. And the gold was like shiny too. It was like kind of like reflective. It gave me like that the same Simon Dumont vibe, you know? And I hadn't seen that in a while. Yeah. So yeah, I know exactly what you're yeah. talking about. That stuff, like Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like, why not look outrageous if you can, you know? <laughs> if you're skiing, it's already insane. Like, you're flying down a mountain on pieces of wood. Like, just go crazy if you want to. Yeah. So, it was – this and Killa was the first person that brought this up to me. He's like – he was the first person that told me that you should dress according to your capabilities. Because, like, <laughs> I don't know. And I want to get your thoughts on that. But, like, I totally remember growing up, and there would be people with the craziest kits ever – and they couldn't do much. And it's like, well, did you really earn the right to be able to dress, you know, like you're Simon Dumont? Like, what what are your thoughts on that? I think it's fine because, like, I was one of those kids. Like, like I had, like, a like the level one, like, Tom Walsh, Jabirish crew neck, and, like, I could maybe front two out of a rail. But, like, I felt sick. And, like, I felt like I was a part of the crew and, like, I've given enough time and like those people turn into good skiers. Like, I don't know. I think you can, you can wear whatever you want. Yeah. I like uh, that. I mean, yeah. yeah. Different view but of like, it. If you're like hating on other people for like not looking as cool as you are and you're not very good, then I don't think you have many legs to stand on. But <laughs> yeah, I think if you're, a nice guy and you're not very good at skiing you can still wear whatever you want there you go there's a so that now the opposite take it's like wear whatever you want just be a good guy which i also i like that yeah so i was shocked so i was doing a little research before this like i your company goes all the way back to 2016 has it have you really been doing this for that long yeah i've been like Yoke was a really big inspiration for me. And I feel like around that time, maybe like a year or two before, they like released this video of Eric Olson uh, like sewing in this basement in Salt Lake. And like, I was, yeah, I was pretty young. And I was like, like, I live in Salt Lake or kind of like in Salt Lake. Like, like I could do this. Like I have a sewing machine. Like I can make a hat. Like I, yeah, I like love Yoke. have like a bunch of Yoke stuff. So I just kind of started making like these hats and yeah, I think that's around then. Yeah. Like 2016. Yeah. I remember my freshman year of high school is when Yoke came out. You said you're 24, right? Yeah. Yeah. Same. So it was like 2012 that, that Yoke started like dropping like some really out of the box stuff. And it's so funny because it would fit in now, but those, po- do you remember the polar bear five panels that they made? Oh yeah. Those things Definitely. went those so, so hard. Those were so I sick. Have a, I've got a flamingo one around here somewhere. And I've got like this bre- this black paisley one that I bought from Steve Stepp. And it's like one of the first yo cats. Super sick. That's so I, sick. Like, sweat it all out though. But yeah, yeah, I love all like all that handmade stuff. Yeah. I don't like I don't say this about like many things, but yoke was definitely ahead of its time. Like they would fit it would fit in perfectly with what's going on now. But he was doing the handmade, hand sewn like ten years ago before like any of the stuff blew up. So that's like so visionary right there. Oh yeah. Well he yeah, they they inspired so many people, like Shane and Eric. Like yeah. Yoke is so sick. I'm waiting for their next drop for sure. Still. It's been, in a, it's been a while. It's, it's got to be a big yeah. one. <laughs> I always try to buy something from them though, when they drop just because they're so sick. Yeah. I think I donated like all – oh, my God, this is taking me down memory lane. But I think I like donated all my old old ones to like Goodwill or something because they like I just grew out of them. 
Oh, dude, I regret that so bad. I would love to keep them just to have, like have them on hand. <laughs> I'm such a hoarder. Like I get like uh, and a traveling circus fan, but like this is Andy's like, yeah. uh, monster shirt. Got that chilling when we saw it. Yeah, I don't throw anything out. Yeah, I collect, I collect so much like early ski stuff. I was gonna say it, and I'll definitely like if I clip if I clip up this episode, I'll you'll, everyone will be able to see it. But your background is up there for some of the best backgrounds for guests right now. It's just like, <laughs> if for everyone listening, it's just like, a, it's just a work studio with like tons of stuff hung on the walls and it's like good lighting too, which helps. But yeah, that's sick. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely kind of chaos, but I like to look at stuff when I work and that's the wall. Yeah, totally. I like to, I usually like to work by a window, but that's just me. Yeah, I, feel, yeah, I got a little one up there, but yeah. <laughs> Cool. So, were you was it lizard <laughs> stuff right from was it lizard stuff right from the start, or was it did you go under a different name at first? Uh, I think it's always been lizard stuff. Yeah. And what was the origin of that name? Um, I think there are a couple of things, but I was uh frog skateboards came out around the same time. I was super hyped on frog. Frog was super sick. And so and I thought I thought that was like a super sick name, just like frog. But and like uh, around that same time, I discovered uh, the band King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. And they're also sick. And the name is amazing. And so it's just like kind of those two things at once. And Lizard kind of was just speaking to me. And. The stuff was like uh, this brand Polar stuff used to be pretty sick. I think it's kind of whack now. I think there's like been some like some ownership changes and stuff. But I thought the idea of just like having a company that's just made stuff, like you could just make whatever you wanted, was pretty sick. So yeah, lizard stuff. It's weird. Yeah, frog and king gizzard and little polar. Yeah, it, it totally fits. Like, if you're just making a whole mix of things, stuff is perfect. Yeah, <laughs> stuff, yeah. I'm not tied down to much. Yeah. So, do you remember, like, your thoughts at the time, what your intentions were with the company? Was it just for fun? Was it something serious? Like, how, how were you viewing it when you first launched it? Um, I remember there was, like, this... Uh, there was, like, this slush video forget who it was but it was like you know some scandinavian game but this dude was wearing this like this the pink like hood balaclava that like everyone kind of had for a bit it was like the first time i saw that and i wanted one so badly so i like did a bunch of searching and i think the only way i i could get one was to order and then bulk like a dozen so I just ordered a dozen of them and like I like drew on this fabric with like this crazy ink, like I like a picture of a wizard that so rhymes with lizard. But uh and then I just sewed it on to these hoods and sold them to my friends. And yeah, that was basically the start. And I sold all of them, like my friends actually wanted them. And, it was sick, like watching them ride and stuff that I made. So I think I just like made hats next and just kind of kept going on from there. Yeah. So it never any super serious intention. It was just like, yeah, yeah. this is good. like, so it, like, did you continue making stuff that, that you personally wanted to own or did you start making stuff that other, that you thought other people would want? I, I, for the most part, I only make stuff that like I want that like, I can't afford or like it's like not exactly what I want then based then I'll just kind of make it and if I learn how to make something then it's a lot easier to just make more of them so yeah it's kind of how usually the process goes I just like something that I want that like maybe I can't afford or yeah then I'll just make it yeah so how did you learn how to do all this I mean you said your mom's a seamstress so were you Get getting tips from her? Were you a YouTube guy? Like, how did you get all your skills? Uh, not a lot of YouTube, honestly. Like, sewing YouTube doesn't really exist. I feel like 
maybe I'm not looking hard enough, but it's like all like not good stuff. I don't know. Um, I took a like a fax class in junior high school, and like uh, the sewing part was super sick to me, and I kind of learned a lot in that class, honestly. And so like after that, I was just asked my mom to like teach me a little more in depth on how it worked. I was, it's probably like eighth or ninth grade. And like my sister was in like, at that time my sister was in the advanced like sewing class and she made like a full dress. And I was like, thought that was super sick. Like kind of into that stuff. But I feel like you learn your skills more by like working on so many different kinds of projects. It's like all kinds of different stuff and like you can like just trial and error you just learn and like yeah deep diving internet forums and like stuff like that is good for specific things i think for the most of the part like like if you really want to make a jacket like you look at a jacket you like and you look at all the seams and like you take measurements and like It'll take a while, but you can like you, you can figure out how they put it together. That's crazy. Yeah. I don't think I have tried to sew something since middle school, but I don't know. Like, do you view do you view all your clothes different now? Like, because when I look at my clothes, I just look at a final product. But like, are you looking at the details when you're getting something new? I definitely do. Yeah, I I don't get a ton of new stuff, but yeah i yeah like i definitely appreciate small details and flows more Damn. That makes sense. yeah no i've been doing these small business episodes and i didn't even like consider like how it affects like how you guys view things after you start doing it because i just like yeah for me clothes are clothes you know but like it, it is a yeah. it is like a piece of art yeah for me yeah buying clothes is tough because if it doesn't fit like exactly how I want it like I, I pay too much attention to it and I like, can't wear it even if like I like it in theory like if it doesn't like fit well or like isn't constructed well it's like it bothers me yeah so while you're making it your stuff like what's the creative process how do you decide what you're gonna make next because you got you really do have a just a random assortment of so many different things yeah uh honestly like i have no idea (laughs) (laughs) Uh, yeah it's tough sometimes like sometimes i'll look at like um like cool like uh other companies that i am like a big fan of like there's this one brand called capital they're uh, like a Japanese brand and I'll look, I'll look at uh, like some of their vintage pieces and like like their stuff is insane and like um, that, like just looking at that kind of stuff like gets my mind going places like I don't think I have the technical ability to make anything like capital but just kind of looking at that kind of stuff and like it definitely gives you ideas like I love like like one of my main things that I do like it's what I did today like I'll go to thrift stores and I'll just look at clothes there's like this uh this place called NPS that I go to a bunch it's like when things get lost in shipping they go there and it's just like you just get crazy stuff there and like yeah just looking at a bunch of stuff and just like just trying to think to myself like what I like about that and like why I like it why I like that like how does that make sense yeah definitely yeah just kind of seeing things and just like being out there just like yeah like seeing what other people are wearing like I don't know. It comes from anywhere for sure yeah no that's cool I like it just like a, just a broad net trying to get as much stuff as possible I there was one piece that really stood out to me i don't know why i'm always like whenever somebody makes one of these i'm always like i kind of want to get that the custom uh 
rug the lizard rug mm. how did you go about that one because that is just that was so sick uh yeah rug i've like i've always thought rugs were so sick like in my house growing up like we had some really cool rugs that i really i didn't appreciate until more recently like oh these things are awesome but um and my girlfriend and i were like looking for a, an activity to do and i don't know what where I saw it, but I was like, I, I think I saw somewhere that like you can make a rug with like yarn and like burlap. And so we looked it up and it's like pretty simple, like time consuming, but simple. Like you needed like like five things to get it going. And you just kind of poke it for a long time. But yeah, it ended up being pretty nice. I made like another one for myself after that, like a like a mushroom looking one. It was kind of cool. And I started another one after that. Maybe that was maybe a year ago. And I haven't touched it in like maybe 11 months. <laughs> but yeah, I should definitely get back into that. The rugs are sick. Jeremy Velo, I'm pretty sure that's how you say his last name, but he ended up getting that rug. And he's like one of my favorite skiers growing up. Like, but that was super sick. Oh, so he was the one that bought the lizard rug? uh-huh wow that's crazy i was super hyped on that it's always cool and like yeah i see names like that come across it's like oh that's so sick yeah do they like send you a dm like yo this is so sick can't wait to cop this or is it literally just like it shows up in your email it's like a receipt a lot of the times it's just like email just like like uh long like i don't even know a few years ago for sure like i just got a an order and it said abner wyman and like i know that's like that's wabs because i've seen like wabs around growing up and i was just like so stoked to like yeah just out of the blue i just see like one of my favorite skiers ordered a beanie from me but that was when like nobody knew anything about me too so like yeah that kind of stuff is awesome but like yeah some people will message me and stuff and like that's cool too but the surprise like one of my good buddies just eat the other day he just like bought a pair of pants off my website like didn't ask for any kind of discount code or whatever like he just bought them like that's so sick like <laughs> you didn't have to do that but like that's so sick <laughs> yeah oh that's awesome so i mean you've been around since 2016 and i and i don't mean this in a bad way but like i had never heard of you which is surprising because it's like if you've been around for so long i figured it might have come up so like do you care about like being like uh, the brand being super wide known or is it just like yeah it's all good like whoever knows about it that's all that's fine uh, i think yeah i don't really care that much about being like super well known like uh, uh my marketing uh <laughs> efforts <laughs> are definitely minimal but i don't know i hope that like people like have, like get to know my products and like talk about them like like i want to i want to see if like they these products like last and if people really like them i think word of mouth is so much more important than posting on your instagram every day but like yeah i'm more more thinking of it as a long term more than short, short term but it's like a lot i've getting been getting a lot of orders over the last like few years it's definitely been picking up so like yeah people are dope yeah that's sick so is this your full-time job or is this just like beer money uh for the last like year and a half it's been my full-time job oh wow that's awesome yeah <laughs> yeah it's pretty yeah pretty awesome to not have a boss oh dude i wish i yeah no that sounds <laughs> that sounds sick are you uh so like the, the long-term vision like you want to keep self, self-sustaining with this or like like is there any uh, vision for something bigger like how how do you see this or what, what like what do you plan for the future for this uh try not to plan too much but um for the time being, just like keep improving my products, just kind of like, yeah, getting, getting some more stuff out there and uh, 
Yeah, I'll definitely like it sucks, but like I'll have to keep right like raising the prices as like stuff gets more time intensive and as like my time becomes more valuable. But yeah, I would love to open up like some sort of uh like storefront slash ski shop in Salt Lake. That'd be like a definitely a, a long term goal. Yeah. That'd be sick. Do you do you do like a uh do you have any sponsored athletes or anything like do you have a like a media side of your stuff or is it all just uh product focused um i send i think the only person i send like gear to and it's not even that often but i send mozzie some stuff because mozzie's the homie and uh i've been talking to him about like him making me some type of like lizard video for like next season so i think that's something in the books but no i'll get my friends gear and like like a lot of the time they won't even like accept the free gear like they'll pay me like a little bit at least but no, i can't really afford to like give out too much stuff just because it, it is mostly all handmade but yeah i'll give people like discounts discount codes too like if they ask for like to be sponsored like like i can't sponsor people but if you like send me a video on Instagram and like ask me, I'll send you like a discount code, but probably not any free gear unless you're Mozzie. (laughs) So yeah. What, so you mentioned that all the stuff's handmade and I keep on going back and forth with people like, Oh, my stuff's manufactured. My stuff's handmade. What are your thoughts on like manufactured versus handmade? And like, why do you choose handmade? Uh, I do it just because, I enjoy making stuff like that's that's what I want to be doing all day is like sewing and creating so for me I think it's cool but if you're not into that that can be like really painful and like I'm really into it and sometimes it can be painful so like you know like production is more work in a lot of ways but it's less work in a lot of ways like so yeah it's different but I think having a mix of both is really cool like for my future I'd love to get like some manufactured products but it's a lot of work and it's a lot of money up front which I definitely don't have so I'm kind of I'm just skimming by right now well yeah I don't know if I have like thousands of dollars to throw at, at samples and that kind of stuff but if I get like some like yeah if i get a bunch of orders and i start stacking some money then i'll definitely do something like that so, yeah, yeah. I definitely yeah i reinvest all my money into lizard stuff so if i get a lot of money then yeah i could see some cool things but we'll see yeah so i mean with everything being handmade like do you steer away for, from some pieces like if people are asking for on even though like what's a com- like a backpack like a not really a complex bag like do you ever are there certain pieces that you just avoid because it's such a pain in the ass or do you take on anything regardless of the difficulty? Uh, I'll take on anything. It's tough though when you know that you're not going to make your money back of like your your time. But like I enjoy making pieces. So like I'll make something crazy for myself and like, like I'll still, if I make something crazy and I, like I'll definitely put it up there on the website and like maybe I won't be making all the money I should off of that but it's still money that I didn't have before and it's like goes back into it I have like I have hoodies and stuff on my website that I are always usually in stock so people order hoodies like every day or so and like yeah it's cool I got other stuff in stock that like I can make when people order so yeah, definitely got different stuff going on. What's the most challenging piece you've done so far? Uh, challenging piece? I just made a jacket that I put up on the website that was tough just, like, because it's the first time. That I've, like, like so I just made a pattern out of, like, some old, uh, like, paper bags. And just, like, that whole process takes a while which is 
kind of rough, but that's also fresh on my mind. I like just finished that. So, but um, ski pants suck to make just because I, I tape all my seams and the seam taping is like, it's, it's brutal work. You're just like in front of the hot iron, like being meticulous and like you got clamps and stuff going on. And like, I'd say like the whole process of seam taping takes as long as like every other part of the pant combined. It's like hours of just seam taping, which yeah. In the process of finding a better way to do it, but the machine I need is like 15 grand, I think, to seam tape. So I might be working with the iron for a little bit longer. Yeah. So why did you decide to get like you're making all this stuff and then you're and then why so why'd you go into making pants? Because I feel like pants is something that every uh like all you guys are doing. So just I I just keep on wondering like what draws everybody to the pants. Uh I started making like just like corduroy pants and stuff first, just like regular street pants. And uh, I was like in the process of looking for new pants for the next season, like around probably around this time, like a few years ago. And I just like couldn't because I drew working at this ski shop like a few years before that. I got this Arcteryx Alpha, Alpha SV jacket, like their top of the line Arcteryx jacket. I got it for a crazy deal. And like since wearing that, like, I only want like full, like three layer waterproof, breathable, like Gore-Tex stuff. I, I couldn't find any like seam taped baggy shell pants. And I was like, well, I, I make pants, so I may as well just learn how to make these for me. And so, <clears throat> yeah, like the first pair I ever made, they're these gray ones and I still wear them like every day. I probably put like 200 days in them and they're, still going fine but yeah just goes back to like making stuff that i know that i want that like i, I really can't find and yeah there weren't really many people making pants at that time either when i first started doing it but yeah a lot yeah lots of people are making pants these days for sure crazy it feels like everyone's making pants so what so what's the so seam taping what's so special about that i don't i don't know that term um it's like so when you sew something and like you put like a top stitch in it or even if you don't but like there are holes in the fabric that you make and like with the needle and so like so you you use really good waterproof breathable fabric but you don't seam tape you have all these holes in the seams and so the water is just gonna go right through so it's like i'll show you it's like this big roll right here and it's like sticky stuff but you just run that over the seams with like with an iron and so like that like fully waterproofs like the seam so it's like it's all like one piece of fabric and it does it makes the seams a lot stronger so it's just like if you're gonna be paying 300 dollars for your pants like you should like um definitely want them to be at the the like most technical and best pants that I can make. Yeah, most definitely. Damn. All right. That's pretty interesting. I think, uh, I think we got a good, pretty good overview of the company, what you're looking at for the future, your process. Uh, let's do some viewer questions. Cause we got a few, we got a few that came in. Uh, a lot of them were just shout outs. Like people just wanted to be like, Hey, what's up? So I don't have all those ones like written out. Uh, cause I take them off Instagram. Uh, but first viewer question is the, it's just a recurring segment. Now, what is your hot take in skiing or fashion or both? Hot take. Uh, I think snow skating is better than skiing. <laughs> I think that uh, snow skating is the future. It's so much fun. You don't need a lift ticket you need like a pair of like boots maybe but you can just wear shoes and you just need the deck and like snow i think it's so much more accessible and like yeah i think more skiers and snowboarders 
are going to transition to, to snow skating when they're all so fed up with the like the hour long line to get up to the canyon that takes 20 minutes usually. Yeah. What about those uh those bike things that people have been riding lately? Like the bike, <laughs> the bikes with the boards instead of the wheels? Yeah, those are crazy. When I was working at Woodward down in like the rental shop, we had a few of those. And like I definitely didn't want to touch one of those. But uh I saw one of my buddies that still works there and he was ripping one like like hitting like the decent sized jumps at Woodward and he was having fun. So I think it's fine, but I don't know. seems like a handlebar to the face is not chill to me. Oh yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of drawn to those things for some reason. They just look like super gnarly, like busting a tail whip on one of those. That'd be so sick. (laughs) I think that like the two ski ones, like, like the mountain bike dudes, like I see those guys up at Brighton on a pow day and they have like a they got like a full face helmet on and they're like dropping like big cliffs and that's sick. I respect that. Yeah, that's pretty gnarly. Damn, all right. So uh I told you that I told you that Brighton was gonna come back up. Asa dot Wade. Ideal Millie tube setup at B Town. Ideal Millie tube, that's a good question. You want to translate that one for the for the audience? Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Brighton has a bunch of like old commission, like decommissioned uh, lift towers that are now big tubes. And they've got a, all different kinds of configurations. Ace is on the park crew, so I hope that he's writing down this one. But uh, I think sometimes they do like an up flat down milli tube i love that one that one's super sick but i think the ultimate milli tube that needs to happen is like the like the quad kink milli tube or even like one more kink than that so like a like maybe like a six kink milli tube just line them all up i think that that would be ultimate <laughs> <laughs> nice all right and killa what's your favorite reptile favorite reptile and with a name like lizard stuff you got to have some you got to have some reptile knowledge (laughs) i think a little like a little newt lizard i think that was really cute and sick yeah i like that you kind of incorporate that too which is cool yeah he's yeah yeah the little the rug lizard yeah (laughs) the frog lizard and i love that you did what did you end up doing with the clay figurine that uh that you use as like the basis for it <laughs> i don't know where that is i thought that was in here but that it might have like might have gotten eaten by a vacuum or something unfortunately damn it was, a, it was like a tiny little figurine but i thought it was super cute yeah <laughs> that's just my favorite piece for some reason i don't know and that's funny that germ has it like in his house somewhere <laughs> Uh huh. I know. That's sick to think about. I think he said that his cat enjoys it, so that makes me happy. Oh, that's awesome. All right, Mickey Mongoose. Uh, cotton or polyester on a five panel? Cotton or polyester or five panel? I like cotton hats. I think I like a good floppy hat that'll just get like soaked up if you uh, sweating it too much. That's like all my hats. <laughs> yeah, cotton word and he also asks uh or or she i actually don't know who mickey mongoose is but they're always submitting questions so shout out uh he's, how are you he's the homie oh yeah, yeah. shout out sean oh yeah. word what up sean i'll just start referencing you by name now whenever i see one of your questions <laughs> uh how are you so steezy on giant skis are you are you a long ski guy or a wide ski guy why is he saying that you got giant skis Oh, I mean, I rode like I read like one eighty three wides. He's probably talking about that's like I usually ride in the park. I guess I've been on wets this year, but for a long time I was just on wides, and like all my pow skis are pretty massive too. Yeah, I like a big ski. I mean, they're they're one eighty threes, and I'm like five ten, five eleven. So, but. 
yeah. I definitely, I feel like I look shorter than I am, though. <laughs> How tall are you, actually? <laughs> I'm like, I think I'm like 5'10", 5, 5'11". 5, okay. It's been a while. But well, you just come I off with somebody that's like 5'5". Like, five, five. <laughs> yeah, when I look at myself ski, I'm like, I look tiny. Like, I don't know, it looks weird. I guess I'm probably just hunched over. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. All right. Uh, Roland. What is the most creative slash coolest thing you've ever made? Oh, actually, this is kind of cool. After MF Doom passed, I made this uh, this sketchy mask with the MF Doom. Just like it's made up of like individual panels and stuff. I thought that was pretty sick. Looks like the, you're wearing the Doom mask. Yeah, I love that. Do any of your was, do any of the ski masks have mouth holes so you could breathe easier, or are they all just completely? Uh, blacked out <laughs> uh mostly just blacked out i've like yeah i've thought about it but it's not as sketchy if you can like see your mouth well also i started making them to like because uh definitely at brighton for the first covid year you had to be wearing a mask like oh uh, yeah like thrown out of the lift line if you didn't have your mask on so i haven't evolved since then but i'll probably put some some breathable features in there soon even if it's just like pinholes like just just something yeah. to make it like easier uh, yeah uh, <laughs> yeah it's def- it's not practical but it's like funny and it looks it's crazy so sketchy yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> super sketchy <laughs> word so dom has one that it, that's got me wondering he says tell us about the packaging no way you eat that many triscuits so what's the backstory on that? <laughs> um, I think that was a recent order, but it was like a trucker hat. And like, I've just got a stack of old uh, paper bags. Like I got one right here. This is like how I ship my products. It's like a paper bag. And I just like fold it up and put some tape I have on there. But if you do that with like a, a hat with a brim, then the brim's going to get all messed up. So I definitely put his hat in a Trisket box and then put the Trisket box inside of a paper bag. So <laughs> have a nice brim when it got to him. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> um, all, all my packaging is just stuff I find for free. So. Yeah, that's sick. Um, Gil asks, can you get custom pants? Like, can a, can a customer order something custom i did it for a little bit and there's too many issues i think with like like just miscommunication on like how like you really like actual measurements and that kind of stuff and it's it's tough it's tough for me to like really get like exactly what like the measurements you want so like the last year I've kind of stopped doing that kind of stuff. And I've also been really picky about the fabric I use with my ski pants lately. Like I only use this, or I, I'm getting new fabric for next season, but like this past season, I like only really use this black Gore-Tex that I really liked and then I tested. And there's this, this dark blue uh, coca tat, like, like this dry suit material. It's like really solid. And so I got a bunch of that. And so I really like this past season, it's really been like black and blue mostly, but that's just because that's the quality fabric I can find. So custom colors are tough on this. Like we're talking belt loops and pockets and that kind of stuff. Cause I've got a bunch of scraps of like ski pant material that I've bought and it's like not good enough. So I won't use it, but. I can use it on like uh, belt loops and stuff that's not important, you know? Yeah, definitely. Uh, his was actually a three parter. Uh, he also asked, when is the next drop and do you do international shipping? I don't know how far international he's talking that. Like, is he saying just Canada? Because that's no problem. But is he like trying to ship it to New Zealand or something? <laughs> I do. I do international, except for that one package I just showed you went to. Um, where did that go somewhere weird where like 
So if you're typing in my website and you want me to ship it to you, if like if what you're typing doesn't exist on like an American keyboard, then I probably can't ship it to you because I ship something. I think it's to Austria or something, and it like just came back the other day because like I didn't have the right characters. Oh, yeah. But other than like yeah, I'll ship anywhere if it comes back to me. That sucks, but it's fine. I'll ship it back out. So yeah. It's, I think my first pair of ski pants I ever sold was to like uh, this dude in Italy who's the homie. And he has like a, he's got a lizard stuff tattoo. Oh, that's yeah. wild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. You don't have to be in the US to have some lizard stuff. But it, <laughs> just be patient with me if it, if it does get sent back to me. So I'll, I'll figure it out, but it might take some time. Did you give him some sort of, uh, a special promo code or deal hookup since he's got lizard stuff on his body for life. <laughs> I should. He deserves it. But that was after he bought the pants, I think. He was, oh, okay. he was too stoked on the pants to not get a tattoo, I think. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So, yeah. So, Gil, uh, when is the next drop? Do you have anything planned or is it kind of just like continuous itty bitty uh, stuff every now and then? <laughs> it's just like when I make stuff. I don't really do like a drop. I usually just do like either like one product that I have the ability to keep restocking or like a one of one or like maybe like a one of three. Just lately I've been like making stuff like three at a time just so I take less pictures and like add every something to my website every time I make something. So ski pants in the future might be like two or three of a kind or something like that. But just doing one style would be, yeah, dreadful for me. All winter just making the same pants. So, yeah. Yeah. Do you have awesome. like a dr- do you have a dream piece? Like, I always think of Supreme when I think of brands doing like funny stuff, like putting like their logo just on like a brick or like on a lighter or something. Do you have something in your mind? You're like, I would love to do that one day, but just not yet. Well, I've reached out to a few different snow skate companies to get like a lizard stuff snow skate, but like they want like a minimum of 300 boards and like, it's like, I think they want like for custom artwork, they want like a hundred bucks a board. Whoa. So that's like 30, 30 grand to have to invest in snow skates. So I'm trying to find like a, a small smaller time producer of snow skates to get some going but i think that might that'd be my dream just because i back it so hard and like i know i could sell snow skates if i had a bunch sitting around but yeah people that try it like they're hooked dude if you got that many then that's like starting your own sk- snow skate company 300 for a 30 grand investment it's, like that's a straight up business right there it's insane and i was like like, is there a possibility of, like, maybe splitting it in half and, like, doing two different pieces of artwork? Like, maybe. And they're like, no. Like, 300 uh, boards, same art. And I'm like, well, that's insane. Like, like, do you sell that many boards a year? Like, that's great for you. <laughs> that is just wild. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to find a producer. Yeah. yeah I think that'd be sick. You got, you got anything else that's out of the box that you're cooking up? That's a pretty good one. <laughs> uh got some like i've i've wanted to do like some full custom like acetate uh sunglasses but that's also super pricey so i've got i've got some like lower grade sunglasses that i'm doing right now but they're still pretty sick i must say like i'm pretty picky about my sunglasses and like yeah i, I definitely wear them they're pretty sick those come out kind of soon that's a little different but Probably just gonna be dropping a lot of different pairs of pants and like hats and just other stuff that I feel like sewing. Yeah. So the last question, this is what I always wrap it up with, because it's just some for some people it's tough just getting started. It's like what's your advice for someone that just like that's been thinking about it, has some interest in doing it, but it's just like can't get started on on their own company. I mean, I feel like everyone says just do it, but like, I mean, you kind of have to, but also like, 
find something you enjoy like some sub part that you enjoy like yeah I don't, know. don't be afraid to like to fail and just try different things out like I yeah lots of my pieces just sit on the website and don't sell but like that's part of it like I had fun making it and it's like a good experience like maybe someone will like stumble upon it in a bit and they'll want it but like yeah not everyone's gonna like what you're doing but like as long as a couple people like it it feels pretty good it feels cool to see stuff out there in, in person but like just in the wild that you made it's yeah it's super cool well people want to support that kind of stuff so if you start making stuff and you care about it people will care about it definitely and so since you've been doing this for so long like has there been points where you're like, I'm just going to quit? Like, this isn't working out. I'm going to pack it in. Like, have you felt that way? And if so, like, how did you just, like, move past it, if you've even felt that way? I mean, I've definitely had, like, because, yeah, since 2016, I, I've definitely haven't been working hard since then. But, like, <laughs> the last few years, I've been working hard. And, like, yeah, I mean, don't turn it into your only job too soon. Like, like all throughout college I was still doing it but there was like no thought in my head until after I graduated college that like I wanted to do lizard stuff full-time like I wanted to do like other jobs and like but I enjoyed sewing and like you can't just sew and like have a bunch of stuff like you need to like get rid of it you need to like sew it you need to sell it so um yeah I like the last two years I've definitely taken it more seriously after I've graduated college and like I've seen that like it might be possible something like this so yeah since then I've definitely definitely been committed but yeah there are times where I don't want to do something or like I don't want to sew and like I'll go do something else like I'll go skateboard or you know, yeah, hang out with friends. I'm super into disc golfing right now. So I'll like go disc golf. Like, yeah, it's easy to get burnt out, but if you really enjoy it, it won't last that long. Like maybe a few days of burnout, and then you'll get back to it. And yeah, it's it's def like when your rent depends on it too, then uh, you definitely get working. Yeah, definitely. Cool. So yeah, we'll bring it on the we'll bring it bring it home. Um, got any shout outs? Any plugs? Where can people find your stuff? Let them uh, let them have it. Um, maybe shout out to Emmett for uh, like a long time ago did a Vishnu collab with me, and he was probably one of my first orders ever on the website. Emmett definitely ordered one of those those hoods with the wizard on it yeah delivered it to him in person he like he was like filming that day with the vx and he like filmed a couple tricks me on it super sick just like that like small recognition like that when you're young goes so long like that'll push you like for years like knowing that like people that you think are sick think that you're sick like yeah that's awesome so yeah shout out to that shout out to everyone that yeah has ever supported me for sure that's awesome i mean it, it shows how long that's lasted like you still remember that that's that's huge mm -hmm. where can they find all your stuff uh lizard stuff.com or at a uh, lizard dot stuff on instagram sick thank you for coming on today it was uh awesome to learn about lizard stuff i totally i totally like once you brought up yoke it's like I definitely have made the connection now. Like everything about the company makes so much more sense ever since that you said that was an inspiration. So I'm super stoked yeah. on it now. And yeah, definitely appreciate you coming on. This was uh, this was fun. Dude, thank you for having me. It's crazy to be alongside the, like the list of guests you've had. It's nuts. So thank you so much. Thanks for being interested. Yeah, definitely. Boom. There we have it.